In this video, we're going to go through the process of exporting this scene in Cinema 4D in the Orbix format so that we can edit it in Octane Standalone. So for this video, I'm using the Cantina.C4D scene. And I'm going to set up a very simple animation. So let's make sure. I'm going to select my bar cam here. And let's add a C4D Octane Octane camera tag. So it's got some Octane settings associated with it. Let's go to cameras and make sure that use camera is set to bar cam. So that's our camera. And I'm going to select it and go to coordinates. And with the timeline set to frame zero, I'm going to set keyframes on position X, Y, and Z. Let's go to the end, which is 72, and just do a simple push in, and a little bit of a shift, and add another keyframe. So we can see now we have a simple animation that goes from here to here. Now let's go to Octane settings. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that Octane for Cinema 4D understands where the location of the latest build of Octane standalone is on my machine. So let's go to settings and under other, go down here to Octane applications and make sure that this is pointing to the latest build of Octane standalone that you have on your machine. So in this case, it's Octane render for RC5 and it's pointing to the folder and directly to the octane.exe file. So that's very important. So we have that set up. Now I'm going to go into Octane Live Viewer window and let's do a render from the current camera. I want to check one more thing before I send this to Octane standalone. I want to go to render, edit render settings, make sure under output that we have our frame range set correctly. So I'm going to set this from frame zero to frame 72. So there we go. And now that we have that set, I'm going to go into the file menu for the live viewer and choose export animated package Orbix. Now, if you were just doing a single frame without any animation in the scene, then you want to choose package Orbix. If you have any animation in the scene, you want to make sure you set this to animated package. You don't have to worry about OCS. That is an older format. Orbix is the current format that uh, we're using with Octane Standalone. So I'm going to choose animated package. And it's going to ask me to select a location. So I'll select my location, choose save. And then it's going to go through the process of playing through the scene. You can see here in the corner, it's playing through the scene. And it's, and it's exporting the objects in the scene and the animation and opening up Octane Render version 4. Now you can see down here it's loading all the parts of the scene. And now in order to see the render, I'm going to go here down to the Node Graph Editor and select Render Target. And then it'll go through the process of setting up the scene for rendering. You can see now it's rendering up here. And just below the render, we have a little timeline here that goes from frame 0 to 72. As I scrub through it, you can see the camera is updating. So why you might want to export from Cinema 4D to Octane Standalone depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, in some cases, the most recent version of Octane Standalone is actually ahead of the plugin version for Cinema 4D. So for example, I'm using Octane Render for RC5 in this scene, and it has some features such as the AI denoiser and uh, the universal material and some other options that have not appeared in the plugin yet. So that's one reason why you might want to export to Octane Standalone. Another reason is you might want to export as the Orbix format so that you can upload it and render it on the online uh, Orc Render Cloud. But that's the basic process for exporting a scene from Cinema 4D to Octane Standalone. The last thing I wanted to point out is you can choose Edit in Standalone. What this does is this saves the file as a temporary Orbix file and then opens up Octane Standalone for you to edit in. But you could also export as an Orbix file, whichever you prefer.